starting from the beginning, here are the vulnerable points. First, the fork. Next, the chin. And now the arms. The forearm. The upper part of the arm. Then the back of the neck. The kidneys. Base of the spine. Now comes the side of the neck and across the Adam's apple. And lastly, to round matters off, come the shin and instep. And now we'll see how all these are attacked. The chin jack. Effective, isn't it? A feint to the fork, out comes the chin. Then an upward thrust with the heel of the hand with all your weight behind it, and down he goes like a plummet. But now for blows with the edge of your hand. Let's study them slowly. The belt has been gripped. A blow with the edge of the hand on the forearm, or the upper arm, or the Adam's apple. He'll let go quickly enough and won't want to argue. But when delivering these blows, the hand is held with fingers extended and thumb likewise. The blow is delivered with the edge of the hand. In cross-cut blows, the palm must be kept downward. So do the various breaks from wrist holds. And this is it. The wrist is caught firmly with one hand. The hand is turned against the assailant's thumb, and there's just no option at all. If caught with both hands, thumbs on top, the answer is just as easy. The free hand is brought over, seizing the fist and jerking it suddenly upwards, and once more, power is brought to bear against the weakest point, the thumb. When the grip is reversed, the hand is seized from underneath and snapped straight downwards. Here now is the wrist. In this one, the belt is seized. A firm hold with the right hand is secured on the wrist. Grasping the elbow with the left hand, it's slightly raised. Then back with the right foot and down with the elbow. Now, cuts on the upper arm with the edge of the hand blows we've learnt about. Follow this by a violent wrench and the business end of the boot ends the argument. Next, if closing is seized above waist, the same idea on broader lines. And this is how it's done. Right hand to wrist, left to elbow. This time, a bit more twist to the elbow and a wider stride to the rear. He's put out with a smash to the face with the knee. And the boot can be used in case of accident. The bear hug from the front arm's pinion is easily broken and this is the answer to that one. To ease the hold, a reach to the fork is made with the right hand enabling the left arm to be brought over the opponent's right, causing a lock. Then, a smash with the knee, followed up with a powerful blow on the back of the neck, and here again the boot makes certain the cure is complete. The release from the bear hug from behind. A nice work if you know how. Well, here's how. First, a vicious bash with a tin hat, then grab at the fork. Bring the right arm across, seize the wrist, step away, and kick him in the face. If the arms are free, try the hat trick again. Then, whipping it off, bring it down on the fingers. He'll let go soon enough. Then a chin jab, not forgetting the knee, just to put him to sleep. Another method. The little finger can seize and bent savagely backwards. Then, turning with the seized arm, edge of the hand blows are applied with great gusto and paralyzing results. Introducing the thumb and elbow hold. This, above any other hold, is the most effective for making your opponent completely powerless and at your mercy. With no great strength on your part, you can take him for a walk, using him as a shield to protect yourself against the enemy. And it's no secret, 
just this. The right thumb is seized between the left thumb and index finger. The right hand is then turned inwards and upwards by pressure exerted on the elbow. Pressure on the fingers brings him up on his toes. And to his elbow makes him absolutely at his captor's mercy. Next, the Japanese stranglehold. And there it is, just an old oriental custom. Both hands are placed on the shoulder, pulling with the left and pushing with the right. Left elbow on left shoulder. Right hand grips it, then pressure with the left to the back of the head and the throttles complete. The arm and neck hold followed by a throw. There it all is. And what a throw. The lead is parried. Then, stepping well in, the right forearm is brought across the neck, the hip coming well into the small of the back. The right wrist is grasped, forcing the head against the opponent and applying pressure. To throw him, the left hand is released. Bending the knees, left hand to right side. Then a lift and a heave, and Jerry sails through space once more. And just to make sure... Exactly. Now the defence against rifle and bayonet, and the disposal of the remains. The rifle is padded with the right hand. Then pressure to the left elbow, the assailant is forced to the ground, and there the rock sets in. If he's a left-hander, the parry is made with the left hand and pressure is applied to the right elbow, with exactly the same result. And the butt of his own rifle comes in handy again. The hold-up, and even unarmed, you're more than a match. It seems easy? Well, it really is. Keep the arms wide apart, watch the opponent's eyes, awaiting the moment for surprise action. The hand is brought quickly down on the gun wrist. Simultaneously, the other hand comes under the weapon, forcing it backwards against the trigger finger. A knee to the pit of the stomach, and that's that. Alternatively, a downward sweeping blow. Seizing the pistol from underneath and bending it up, over and down against the trigger finger will bring home the bacon. The hold up from the rear. When held up, glance over the shoulder to make sure it is a revolver. A sharp turn is made to the left, the left arm dropping and locking the right wrist. A chin jab, a knee drive to the fork, and the table is a turn. A useful reverse action is a sharp turn to the right, locking the pistol arm with the right arm. Then, a cut across the Adam's apple, followed by the wrist and arm lock. And the moral. If you ever hold anyone up, keep him well away from you. From such a distance, he can't take liberties. On how many occasions may your life, or someone else's, depend on correct dealing with a sentry? He should be stalked from behind, and then, simultaneously, struck across the Adam's apple and punched in the small of the back. The right hand is clapped over the mouth and nostrils, and he's dragged away to where the Japanese stranglehold can be applied. And that's the end of that one.